I want to use a green screen, but I have no idea where to start. You're in the right video. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Serena here, and I have finally made the video that so many of you have requested, which is a very in-depth look at how to start green screen, where to begin, all the way through doing a full lesson plan and troubleshooting, including Google Meets and everything that you all have been asking for. So please watch the entire video, and I mean really watch the entire video, because at the end I have a very big announcement that I am so excited about, and I need you to watch, so keep watching and I hope that it's helpful for you. Okay, so it's time to set the scene. Step number one, find a wall. In my situation, I need a wall. Other people are using PVC pipes or other rigged setups to hang their green screen, but in this setup, I'm going to show how to do this with a wall. So find an empty wall space. Step number two, eliminate your natural lighting. In this room, I have a big window that gets a ton of natural light. I have the blinds drawn and curtains closed and only artificial light is lighting this room. That is actually key for getting your green screen to be as clear as possible. With natural light, the computer picks up pixels and it doesn't look as clear. That's the halo everyone's been talking about that they don't like. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up our green screen. So we're gonna take our green screen out of the bag. We're gonna unfold it. And it is six feet by six feet long. This is what I have found to be the perfect size to fit in your frame, but not too big that you can't fold it away at the end of the day. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip my curtain hooks um, onto each corner, and I'm gonna go hang it up. So I'll be right back. Next step is you need a pocket. My pocket is a felt bag that has Velcro hooks on the back. And because my green screen is felt, I can stick it wherever I want on the felt green screen. Many people have been using plastic bags that are green. I've seen some people use containers that they've stapled, like an oatmeal container that they've stapled to their tarp. Anything that you can use that matches your green screen that you can put your hand into and store items so that you can make things disappear. So let's go put this on the green screen. Now our green screen is set up and we are ready to go. However, there are a few things to keep in mind. The pocket needs to match the screen exactly in order for the magic to happen. If the pocket is a slightly different color of green, the computer won't pick it up and you won't be able to make things disappear. This goes for any color. If your screen is not green and you've chosen to use a fuchsia or a turquoise, that's perfectly okay and it will work as a green screen, but make sure that your pocket and accessories that you're using to be invisible match it exactly or it will not show perfectly on the screen. As far as materials for your screen, so many things work. Construction paper, like these sheets and this shade of green worked great for me in the beginning. I taped this entire wall full of construction paper and the screen worked awesome. I was taping objects to it, worked so well. Then I wanted a bigger green screen, so I bought a professional set and that worked really well too. You can do this, you can buy one, you could use paper, you can use a shower curtain that's green, you can use tablecloths, towels, anything that's a consistent color that you can put behind you works awesome. I have chosen now to use a felt green screen with a felt pocket because felt objects stick to felt. So I can do interactive games over and over again without having to use tape. This has been the best upgrade I've given myself for the green screen yet, and I can't wait to show you the activities I'm doing with it. And lastly, for accessories for your green screen, I highly recommend having two green sticks that match your green screen perfectly so that they can be invisible and a magnifying glass that does not match your green screen. Okay, let's recap the things that we need to get started. We need a space for our green screen. We need to eliminate natural light almost entirely. We need to fill our room with an abundance of artificial light so that we show up perfectly on the green screen. We need a pocket that matches the screen 
and we need accessories that also match the screen. That's the sticks. So let's go set up our workstation. I like to have a little space for all of my accessories. So I have my lesson plan activities here, my magnifying glass, my sticks. I like to use these two yoga blocks so that I can lift my laptop up, set my laptop on top of it, and I'm ready to work. All right, so I've entered my Zoom call. I've set that up. I've got my green screen behind me. How do I add a virtual background? So we've got our call pulled up, and as you can see down here, we've got our microphone, a little arrow, a stop video, and then another little arrow pointing up. I'm going to click on that and choose choose virtual background. The first thing we want to do before we add our background is make sure that we've clicked down here in this bottom left hand corner. I have a green screen because we have a green screen. So once we have a green screen, we can pick any image that we want. So I want to show how we would add an image from my desktop. So as you can see, I was looking for blue sky images and I'm going to hit add. I'm going to click blue sky. I'm going to hit open and we've got blue sky behind us. Now, if it starts to look a little strange, almost like you can see the green or it's showing up on your face, it's because you haven't manually picked the color of the background. That's right here in this box that I'm circling. See how it has this little green spot? Zoom automatically detects the color of your video background. Well, they don't actually automatically detect it. We have to click this and hover around the background color and touch it. And that is how we can get our backgrounds to be nice and crisp and clear. I can't emphasize it enough that we have to do this multiple times throughout the sessions to make sure that it is crystal clear. So in between sessions, I'm often just color checking, color checking in case the lighting in the room has changed at all. If you're using Google Meet and you're wondering if this applies to you at all, it does. You can use Zoom with Google Meet and I wanna show you how. The first thing you need to do is create a free Zoom account. We don't need to worry about this Zoom account being HIPAA protected because in this case, you're using Google Meet, which is HIPAA protected and allowed in your county or who you're working for. So we're using Google Meet, but we are logging into Zoom and creating an account and a meeting so that we can have a virtual background. And then we're going to make this window just a little bit smaller with our Zoom call. And then we're gonna go into our Google Meet. So. I've got my Google Calendar pulled up here. I click join with Google Meet. There I am, I see myself. I'm turning off the camera because we don't need to see two of me. So there's my camera is off. I'm going to hit join now. I've joined the call and I'm going to present now and I'm going to present a window and that window is me on Zoom. So here I am, I just popped up and I like to make my Google Meet calls half and half so that I am half of the screen and they are half of the screen. And they are watching me on Zoom right now and I can change my backgrounds just like I would on a Zoom call. I can make my different backgrounds, whatever I need. And I can see my client right there to the left. So that is how you can use Google Meet and Zoom at the same time and use your backgrounds. When we're trying to add a photo that is being stretched out on Zoom's background, one option we have to make it fit is to use PowerPoint. So what we have to do is we open up our PowerPoint and have a blank slide. We drag and drop the photo that has been stretched out into our blank slide. Then we're going to make sure that the photo is filling the entire slide. So we're gonna drag this down and we're going to then go to file and page setup. The key here is to change the setting to on screen with a 16 to nine ratio and hit okay. And then we're going to save this as a JPEG instead of a PowerPoint presentation. We're going to name it bear and save as JPEG, hit save. And as you can see, a new folder has popped up on my desktop with the new bear photo that will perfectly fit your Zoom slide. So we have our blue sky background behind us, but what if we don't want the background behind us? What if we want it to show up on our magnifying glass? So here's how we do that. We're going to go back to choose virtual background 
and we have green selected as our background color right now. But what I want you to do is hover your little cursor over the color of your magnifying glass, and then you'll see that the picture shows up on the magnifying glass, which is the, one of the coolest mag magic tricks of the green screen. Pretty cool. And this is why I like to make sure that this color does not match the color of my green screen because I don't like to move workspaces and I can use this tool while I'm in front of my green screen and I don't have to leave. If it were green, I wouldn't be able to do it here because it would be showing up on the background as well and this would be invisible. Let's try a lesson. I'm going to upload a background of Mr. Bear. And um, of course, we're going to be feeding him. And what I have right here, why my hand is disappearing, is because we're using the pocket. So this is what the scene looks like here. We've got our pocket, and we've got our bare mouth located in that same spot. Depending on the picture, the pocket, you can move it around so that way it just goes with whatever your background picture is. And in this case, it's Mr. Bear, and his mouth just lines up right here with the pocket. So we've got our food items to feed him. We've got our banana, our hamburger, our pizza, apple, watermelon, and can't forget the most adorable food of all, the egg. So I ask my kids, ooh, Bear is so hungry. What do you think he wants to eat first? He says, I'm so hungry, I want to eat something sweet. He wants to eat something sweet. Do you think the pizza is sweet? No, the pizza's not sweet. He might get angry if we give him a pizza. What should we feed him that's sweet? Watermelon is sweet. Okay, Bear, we found something sweet for you. Open up. He ate it and he said, mmm, delicious, but now I want something with cheese on it. Which one has cheese on it? The pizza? Mmm, look at that cheesy pizza. Okay, open up. He says, mmm, delicious. That was so yummy. So that's why we use the pocket because Bear can eat things and we can take them out or put them back into the pocket. And as he eats, we put them all into the pocket and he ate everything, it's gone. I also wanna show how we can make this activity turn into a floating activity with our green stick. So just to show the background here of what's happening, I have my green stick here and I'm gonna take one of our felt foods, let's take the egg. And since this is felt, I can put it on the little Velcro dot here and just stick it right on. And I can say, all right, I wonder what we could feed Mr. Bear. I don't see any foods. What, you see a food? What food do you see? You see an egg? Oh, an egg, yum. Do you think he's gonna eat it? It's floating towards his mouth. <gasps> he ate it. So really the idea with the stick is that we can make things float and sort of just hover and talk to us. You could do characters here. Lots of things you can do with floating sticks. Pretty cool. We did it. We finished our first lesson on a green screen. We've learned everything from start to finish on how to do it. And I really hope that this video was helpful for those of you who are just now getting started. I know that you can do it. Don't fear. Green screen is easy and it is so worth it. Okay, guys, it's announcement time. Before I make this announcement, I just want to say something. I have felt during the last few months of distance learning with the green screen that we are really on to something. And I think you all know it's true. Some kids are responding to this better than in person. There's something to be said about distance learning and it's working and it's awesome. And I know that we're in uncharted waters right now. There's nothing before this. We're the beginning of a distance learning movement. And how cool is that? And it sort of made me think, I need this to last past the next few weeks. The, the paper wall wasn't working. I can't fold that up and take that with me as the months progress. And I wanna continue doing hybrid teletherapy and also in-person therapy, which leads me to this announcement, which is, I made a distance learning kit and I absolutely love it. And I've been using it with my clients all week. I think it is fantastic. It's a felt green screen. It's the pocket. It's my fruits and vegetables. 
that I drew myself and I put on felt. They match perfectly with the backgrounds. They stick to the board. I don't have to keep using tape. And most importantly, it's something that is both versatile and durable. So these kits are available for purchase at PlaySparkToys.com along with PDF versions of the background seen in this video and a few others and all of the foods that are seen that you can print and use on your green screen starting right now. So go check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks guys, I'll talk to you soon, bye.